hi thank you so much for joining me what we're going to be talking about in this video is percent composition and when we do percent composition we're calculating the percent by mass so there's going to be a number of ways we talk about percentages this is the percent composition of an element within a compound uh, in other aspects of chemistry, we'll talk about the percent by mass of a mixture or a solution, or the percent by volume of a mixture or a solution. Now we're focusing in on, we have a compound and we want to look at the percent of each element. Now the law of constant composition says that if we have a pure substance, that substance will have a constant percent by mass of each element present regardless of the sample size so since it is does not depend upon the sample size we call that an intensive property a property that is constant regardless of the sample size and um, so since it's intensive we can pick our sample size. And so we're going to choose a sample of one mole. And the reason is whenever you do a percent, a percent is the part over a whole times 100. And if we assume one mole, we can use a total mass that's equivalent to the molar mass of the substance. So it simplifies things a little bit. So let's take a look at potassium carbonate. If we want to know the percent of that that is potassium, when we calculate that molar mass, and that molar mass is equal to 138.21 grams per mole, when we did that calculation, we took two times potassium's molar mass. That's the part that is due to potassium. And that will be over the whole, which is 138.21 grams of the potassium carbonate is the whole. And since a percent, we're going to multiply it by 100. And since this is all taken from the periodic table and we take those to two decimal places, I'm gonna take my percent to two decimal places. This is really not about measurement, so the concept of significant figures is not, well, significant um, since we're taking it from the periodic table. So we won't get too hung up on those for this kind of calculation. Uh, you just don't wanna to round too much because if you round too much, it's going to throw your answers off and you can lose points. Well, what percentage of this is carbon? Well, when we calculated that molar mass, there was one carbon times its molar mass of 12.01 divided by the whole times 100, and we get 8.69%. And then finally, a couple of ways we can do oxygen, right? The sum of all percents have to equal 100. So you can add these up, subtract from 100 and get your value. I'm just going to go ahead and set it up to make my point of how we do these. When we calculated the molar mass, three oxygens each contributed 16 grams per mole to the total molar mass times 100 and I get 34.73 and within rounding that should sum up to equal the total of 100 percent okay so that's how you would do it of each element if they say of all elements you have to do each and every element all right you may be asked to do just a particular compound in there. This one asks us for what is the percent oxygen. We have barium plus two, chlorate minus one, hexahydrate. And it asks what is the percent 
oxygen. So if we were to do this whole molar mass, we'd come up with a whopping 412.35 grams per mole. And when we did that, we had six oxygens here and six oxygens there. So oxygen would have contributed 12 times 16 times 100 gives me 46.56%, okay? Now, this is a pretty important concept. Uh, if you wrap your mind around this well, what we're going to find is that we can use this fraction as a conversion factor. And if you can get that, you can really streamline some of your work. So, thanks for listening. You take care.